Disney is also starting to release like uh, episodes of their shows. Like uh, I know they did it with Andor. They released like three on actual like TV network TV. Well, it's because they also own ABC. Yeah, so they're like they're releasing on there to try to get people. I guess I don't know. I don't know what the thought process is about what that is about. Maybe to attract older people. Yeah, that's that's what I'm assuming. Attract a different audience to go into streaming service. Um, but yeah, you can tell you can see that streaming services are trying to do things differently to see how to make profit because obviously it's not working how it is now. Yeah, because they just got obsessed with the whole like infinite growth shit of yeah, of like oh. We can get more people on the service. That means infinite more money. And it's like, not really. You have a limited amount of people that exist in the world. Especially with Disney Plus. Are, were they expecting just their bad catalog just to yeah. attract? I guess. Because they, what they're releasing. That's how they took over home, like, uh, home theater releases. They just had their fucking uh, backlog of yeah. catalog. That's true. They do have a classic back. And what they did uh, is then they fucking. <laughs> are you familiar with like their whole Disney vault model that they used to have? Um. You had to remind me. I bet you remember seeing the commercials. Yeah. But so for the longest, they were so anti home theater because they thought, you know, because if you get VHS, you could make a copy of the VHS. So they were very, very anti home theater and they kind of just got forced into it. But their model was first like they had like the big classic Disney films they would not release on home video. They would only release like their B tier catalog. But they, mm -hmm. but that's how they would label it. Yeah. So everything was in like, so the big shit was in the Disney vault and you could only watch it whenever they randomly put it in theaters. At a certain point, they finally started releasing them like one at a time. But the business model was essentially like, we are only selling this for X amount of time and then you'll never be able to get it again. And then it would go yeah. back into the vault and then they would release another one and do the same thing. Yeah. And they just kept repeating that, repeating that until people kind of just like we already have this fuck off yeah and i was thinking about that i was like that is different than the streaming because people can just like watch it one time and then they can unsubscribe and then they can do they can do a lot it'd be a lot of churn with buying or releasing it like buying the digital or not digital but buying like a dvd or whatever you're buying it and you can watch it one time but you're you're keeping that you bought it one time you don't only have to buy it one time streaming services you can unsubscribe, subscribe again if you want to watch it. Unsubscribe again after you're done watching it. Like, you don't have to keep subscribing. So I don't understand why they thought that business model would work. It's the same. Well, here's the thing also for like, whenever you went from DVD to Blu-ray, well, that's another market. Because yeah. now it's like, oh, people that care about a little bit more quality can get this. And then same thing with 4K. Yeah. But 4K hasn't had the same level of adoption because streaming services. So people are just like, oh, I don't need to buy the physical. I just watch it on streaming yep. services. Yeah. Yeah, basically the business is fucked. <laughs> but yeah, I can see them just uh, kind of rewinding or slowing down, going back to uh, leasing it off their their product off to a different streaming service. Oh, for trying sure. to make profit. I can see that happening with all these streaming services. I mean, that's what Warner Brothers started doing. Was they're yeah. like, uh, why are we holding on to this? Because yeah. we still have to pay participations. Yeah, and they're just like, we're just spending money holding this for yeah. the hopes of keeping people here. Or keep getting people subscribe and obviously it's not working out. So let's just release it somewhere. Yeah, that was like, we'll just release it to Amazon. Because guess yeah. what? They're probably better at being an exhibitor. Yeah. It's crazy uh, with Avatar 2, how like, I don't, I forgot like the profit is made, but it was like number one after release theaters, they releasing it, they uh, lease it off to, you know, these other exhibitors. Mm -hmm. And on Apple, I think it was Apple. It was like number one and it hasn't even released yet. It was like pre-release, pre like people were uh, pre- or pre-buying it or pre-ordering it or something like that. It's like, yeah, that's a smarter play in instead of releasing it just straight to Disney+. Plus. Yeah, well, streaming is great for the consumers. It's just not a sustainable business model. It can be if they start leasing off their stuff off to exhibitors. And like you said, it will make other True, exhibitors... True, they're not having to pay the same cost for production, but then you still have to deal with paying, you know, the cost for the rights to... Yeah, but at the same time, it will be like... Yeah. At the same time, it would be like buying a DVD, a little, a little bit different. For but for the producer, producers and um, distributors, it will kind of be like buying a DVD. Like the consumers are buying a DVD, yeah. so they're kind of making the profit. But yeah, I can see that happening, and it will make a lot of uh, a lot more sense for that to happen.